What's going on guys? Bryce Lewis here, and I just want to talk about a study that I had a chance to do. Uh, and study in a loose sense because um, this was not in a uh, controlled setting, but I did try to control as many variables as possible, and I want to present on what I was able to find. Um, I'll also do a, a write-up of this as well, um, but I wanted to make a video as well. So, um, not too long ago I asked for volunteers for a 12-week training approach. Um, and had an enormous response to that. Uh, we selected people based on some criteria. We wanted people who were male powerlifters who had at least one powerlifting meet under their belts, um, who were able to have video proof of their training maxes, and whose Wilk score fell between 290 and 380 uh, within the USAPL Class 2 and Class 3 because we figured that would be uh, intermediate level powerlifters so we could have an operating definition of what that was. So, uh, after uh, confirmation of people's uh, strength levels and uh, age and, and all those things, they met the criteria. Um, we started off with 62 powerlifters and split them up into uh, two groups randomized. One group um, got a 12-week training approach uh, in its entirety, uh, a templated approach designed to increase their um, powerlifting total. Um, and the training variable that we really wanted to test was whether or not the uh, uh, perceived benefit of receiving custom coaching had any real effect on strength. So the other group um, were individually told that they were chosen among five people uh, to receive custom coaching, um, where I would ask them uh, for their feedback on a weekly basis and make modifications to a training plan on a weekly basis. So I asked for lasted RPEs thoughts and feelings about how they were feeling during the training approach. In some cases, uh, they submitted video footage. Um, and then everyone in that second group uh, was told that they were receiving custom coaching, even though uh, I told each person that I was only selecting five people. Um, so the training approach was exactly the same. It was identical. Um, all I was doing was giving it to them one week at a time uh, and giving them comments along the way, such as, based on last week's training uh, and based on your feedback, here's the modifications for this week. Or, hey, it looks like uh, fatigue is relatively high right now. Here's some of the adjustments we'll make. And I've recorded all of those with training responses. So um, everyone in the second group that was receiving quote unquote customized training um, got the same exact response from me and training on a weekly basis. So um, for the two groups, the average age was 25 and a half uh, years. Uh, the mean age for the custom group and 25.4 years of age for the template group. Wilk score average was 349 for the custom group and sorry 349.4 and 345.4 uh, for the templated group and the body weight on average was 193 pounds for the custom group and 193.0 pounds for the template group. So as you can see, the groups were um, matched pretty well as far as overall uh, age, Wilkes, and body weight. As far as the training approach, I had them pressing uh, three to four times per week. I had them um, doing deadlifting work twice per week and squatting work twice per week. Uh, and as far as the outcomes go, uh, both groups, I believe, ended up increasing their average total um, by somewhere around 50 pounds, just underneath that. Um, the kicker and, and the overall um, crux here, and I'll get some concrete numbers to everyone because I know, um, I know that's important and obviously a part of rigorous uh, study. Um, thanks to the work of Joe Stanek and Andrew Vigazzi, especially for uh, their work crunching statistics, running t-tests and finding out the p-values for these groups, as well as the uh, d effect size um, so that we can see if this was actually a significant result. Uh, it turns out to be the case that um, the p-value was very high comparing the powerlifting totals between the two groups. Um, and there was no significant difference in strength between the two groups. So uh, one group believing they were receiving custom coaching and one group uh, who were receiving just a templated approach and asked to check in on a weekly basis. Did I complete the approach? Yes. On to the next week. Yes. On to the next week. Um, between those two groups, there was no statistical difference in strength increase. So uh, what can we say from this? Uh, well, number one, let me talk about the limitations. Um, I did not get a chance to see video footage on a weekly basis, so I was not able to observe these athletes on a weekly basis and make sure that they were uh, completing the training. 
Um, and this was only with male powerlifters and, and uh, an overall number of initially uh, 62 total athletes with 31 between the two groups. With a few injuries, uh, I think the number dropped down to 20, 24 and 19, I believe, uh, for the total number of lifters. And uh, if anyone was, for whatever reason, unable to complete training volume, we had to exclude them from the uh, final results. But, uh, but there we have it. And uh, we also did not take body weight afterwards, so not able to make uh, comparisons on body weight. But as far as strength levels overall, um, those are the results, which I think are pretty interesting, but also pretty straightforward. We know training volume uh, is really one of the main drivers of uh, progressive adaptation. And um, believing that you were receiving custom coaching really does not have any effect on overall training volume. So um, we sometimes believe that there is a halo effect uh, or a buy-in uh, or a, a certain level of accountability by getting custom uh, coaching. That may very well be the case and there are plenty of benefits from receiving custom coaching including uh, technique analysis, including uh, ongoing education, uh, actually making <laughs> changes to a training plan. In this case, I wasn't able to make changes to the training plan. Um, but, uh, but there we have it. So interesting results and uh, I hadn't seen anything like that so I was able to um, uh, do some study and, and actually find uh, some meaningful result here. Um, I'd like to do more studies like this in the future and I think uh, with as many athletes are out there and as many experienced powerlifters use social media, uh, as long as we control variables and uh, keep athletes accountable, um, we can enter this realm of being able to do studies in an online uh, basis. So I'm not a researcher or a scientist uh, by nature, but I think if I control things and uh, I do my best to be a scientist and be a good scientist and track data and, and be meticulous, um, that I can contribute. And I hope this inspires other people to do the same. Thanks, guys.